G'day, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Classroom Professor. Welcome to this week's video which is on the topic of 10% and using 10% in computation. This comes from the very last book in our Bring It On series which is aimed at Grade 5 or Year 6 students. So these exercises are designed for students who know their number facts, who understand fractions, they understand decimals and they're moving into percentages. It's worth saying here that um, percentages has tended to be taught as a new idea, a new set of numbers and you know a whole new topic sort of thing. When an actual fact is quite similar to other topics. So prior to this particular set of worksheets um, we would have done things like this with students to say 10% is the same as ten hundredths because percent means per hundred or out of a hundred and by using the knowledge we already have of simplifying fractions we can see that that's one tenth and also because we've learned this before we know that one tenth is the same uh, same quantity as one divided by ten so we can apply it as a division so there's a number of prior steps that we would expect our students to have already learned. So looking at 10% of 20, what is 10% of 20? The students should, by this train of logic, know that this means we're finding a tenth. Tenth being a power of 10, we can use place value. So we're not going to say how many tens are there or let's divide 20 by 10 as such, as that sort of number fact, but rather we're going to say uh, let's move the digits. You'll know if you've watched any of my other videos on decimals, I keep saying over and over, don't move the decimal point because that doesn't make any sense. Decimal points don't move. So we're going to move the digits. To me, this if we are going to make this into a sort of formalized method, there are two questions. Are the digits moving left or right because they're getting uh, larger or smaller, respectively? And how many places? Obviously, it's one place for 10, two places for 100, three for 1,000 and so on. So because it's 10 and because it's getting smaller it's going to be to the right and it's going to be one place. So if it helps the students I'll write down a one and an arrow. So we move everything to the right one place. The two tens become two ones. We're finished. Nice and easy. Let's look at 47. Applying the same method the four moves into the ones place. What do we do with the ones? The seven ones of course they become seven tenths and then 865 we will obviously have 86.5. We could draw columns. Oftentimes when students don't get this, I'll draw columns and say, well, look, here's the column. Which column is the 8 in? Where will it move to? Etc. Etc. All right. Then after those questions, we have some discount questions. So percentages are useful in a retail setting for you know, shop, keep, shop owners to offer people a discount. So we're still using 10% and we're going to say what would we have if it was a 10% discount on $200. <clears throat> this will have two steps to it because we need to work out the 10% first and because that's the discount, that's not the part we're paying, uh, we will subtract that. So again, we can say to students, well, we're moving it this way, one place. So clearly that's going to be $20. Let's take that away. Now, we could do a whole algorithm, but we're talking about grade fives, year sixes. They should be able to do this mentally. We don't really want students to be locked into, you know, a paper and pencil uh, laborious method when we could do this in our head. So... Um, a student who doesn't need to write the $20 down, I wouldn't quibble with that. In fact, I'd encourage them to hold that in their head and then move and just take it away from the 200 and get uh, 180. Let's do one more. So he'll have another 10% discount. 10%, I should have left the words on the screen. 10% discount on, and this time it's just $7. Another example, bit more difficult this one because there's no zero there um, and it's not in, already in hundreds. So again, if the student needed to write it down, we could help them see that that's 70 cents. The seven moves into the tenths column in dollars. Or alternatively, of course, they could see it not as dollars but as cents. Either way is fine. And then do the subtraction. Again, if possible, do it mentally and get the answer $6.30. So that's it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you next time.